I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and active out there. My name is Jess. I'm with The Royal Cookie here in Omaha, Nebraska. I make decorative royal icing cookies for all occasions. And today I'm gonna show you how to decorate a few of my favorite cookies. So we're gonna start with the sweet treat kit, which includes ice cream cones, donuts, cupcakes, and a little wrapped candy. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it, and I hope that you're able to follow along at home. So the first thing we're gonna do is wash our hands. All right, Girl Scouts, let's jump right in. So you'll need a few things to get started. The first is gonna be a baking sheet, a couple pieces of parchment paper, a little bit of flour, a rolling pin, and then also the shapes of the cookies you're gonna cut. So I have a big circle here for my donut, an ice cream cone, cupcake, and my little wrapped candy. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I already have my dough prepared. I'm gonna take my baking sheet and I'm gonna start cutting the shapes that I want. Um, so I'm gonna do my cupcake, candy, ice cream cone, and my donut. I actually don't have a smaller um, cutter for my um, center of my donut, so I'm actually just taking a little tip, or you can use a lid, um, anything, a smaller round shape would work. So I'm just gonna put that right in the middle, try to center it, and then press, and then I'll take the dough out. I'm gonna set these about um, an inch to half an inch apart on the center of the cookie sheet. With my remaining dough, I'm gonna go ahead and roll that back out. You also want to preheat the oven to whichever um, temperature your recipe calls for. So you're going to put down a little bit of flour so that the dough doesn't stick. And then I'm going to set my dough down there and then I'm going to take my rolling pin and I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on that so that my dough does not stick to my rolling pin. Um, what I like to do is tuck the parchment paper in between me and the countertop. And so that when you're rolling, your parchment paper isn't sliding. So my rolling pin is actually designed with a little barrier here, which will prevent me from rolling the cookie dough too thin. You don't want to roll it too thin, otherwise it'll burn faster than you'd want it to. Another tip that you can use when rolling out the dough is to set a couple of rulers or a couple of barriers down and then rolls to make sure that you're, you've are you got a consistent thickness. So once I've got that rolled out, I'm going to cut a few more shapes. and placed on my cookie sheet, I am going to go ahead and bake them for seven minutes and I'll be back. And during that seven minutes, you can go ahead and wash your hands again, sanitize your area, clean up and get ready for the frosting. So it sounds like my cookies are done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop them out of the oven and put them on my, um... so I'm gonna go ahead and take them out of the oven. And I'll set them on my little trivets here. So once the cookies have come out of the oven, you want to um, immediately take them off of the hot pan and put them onto a wire rack. You can also set them on napkins if you don't have a wire rack just to get them off of the heat and stop them from cooking. The cookies are still soft, so you want to be careful not to break them. And you can tell that the cookies are done because they've got a nice golden brown color to the edges. So now that I've got my cookies cooling on the wire rack, I'm going to go ahead and get started on my royal icing. So now that we have our cookies baked, we're going to go ahead and get started on our royal icing. So what you'll need is um, a bowl of your favorite royal icing recipe. Anytime you're not using the royal icing, you want to make sure that you cover it with plastic wrap or ceram wrap, wax paper, whichever you have available. Um, and then we'll also need a couple of bowls to mix our royal icing colors in. You'll need a spoon, half a teaspoon, measuring spoon, a little cup, your piping bags, and then also your colors. So the colors I'm going to do today is going to be the pink, blue, purple, and brown. 
First thing we're going to want to do is wash our hands. So let's start by um, taking some of our oil icing. We're going to set that plastic wrap aside. And then we're going to take a spoonful of our royal icing, maybe a couple spoonfuls. And we're going to put that in a bowl. So the first color I'm going to do is uh, my white. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water um, and my half a teaspoon measuring spoon and I'm going to slowly incorporate that into my royal icing. I'm going to do a couple of spoonfuls and then I'm going to stir that in. until it's the consistency that I want. A couple more. Give it a good stir. Make sure that you're incorporating all of that water into the frosting so you're getting a nice even consistency. Once the frosting is it's taking about 15 seconds for the frosting to be com completely flat again, um, that's about the consistency I like. It, it dries a little bit faster. The wetter you have it, the longer it's going to take for the frosting to dry. Um, and so it's going to make it more difficult to layer colors on top of colors. Once I have that mixed, I'm going to take my little frosting bag, set it in the cup, and then wrap it. And then I'm going to pour the frosting into the frosting bag. You want to do this very slowly so that you're not getting frosting all over the place. Um, if you get frosting on your bag, you can always clean it off with some warm water and a paper towel. But I try to avoid getting frosting all over my bag because it makes the bag really sticky. And nobody wants a sticky bag. So once you've got your frosting in the bag, um, you can go and twist it up. You can use either a twist tie um, or a little rubber band that you might have um, lying around to close up the, the end. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. And there I have my first color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the remaining color. Anytime you're using food coloring, you want to make sure to not use too much. A little bit goes a long way. So either use the end of a toothpick or slowly um, drop it in one drop at a time. Because uh, again, a little bit goes a long way, especially uh, for the small amount of frosting that we're working with today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the rest of my frosting colors. bags made and our cookies baked, we're going to go ahead and get started on decorating the cookies. So first thing we're going to do is cut the tip of the bags. You can use couplers um, and metal tips if you'd like. I just prefer to use the tipless bags because they're easier to use for me and it requires a lot less cleanup. So I'm actually going to alternate in between this view and the close-up view so you can actually see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. You'll need a pair of scissors. Um, and then your frosting bags. So what you're gonna do is if you see the seam here, you're gonna pinch along the seam with the seam up and you're gonna cut with your finger supporting the end of the scissors. You're gonna cut the tip very carefully. You wanna start very small um, because the bigger the hole, the harder it is to control the flood of the icing. So you wanna cut a very, very small hole. So you can see the bag is just Barely hanging over there. And then you can test it by giving it a little squeeze. Looks like I didn't cut enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit more. And then I'm gonna test it. And it looks like that's about the consistency and the width that I want. So you can see that bat, that hole is very, very small. And I'm not getting a whole lot leaking out because the hole is small enough. So the proper way to hold the piping bag is gonna to be to set the end of the piping bag in between your thumb and your index finger and that's actually what's going to be holding the bag up and then you're going to just very gently wrap your hand around um, the rest of the bag so we're going to get started with the ice cream cone cookie i'm going to go ahead and do the outline so you always want to outline the cookie first and then do what we call a flood so i'll get started here by outlining and i'm doing just a very gentle squeeze and I'm setting it down and then just pulling as I outline. I'm gonna go ahead and flood. I will 
make sure I'm holding it correctly. And then I'm gonna slightly apply more pressure. So I'm gonna squeeze just a little bit, not too hard, because you don't want to burst the bag or have too much frosting come out. I'm gonna go ahead and slowly go around that outline. And then I'm going to, in circular motions, take either a toothpick or a scribe tool, and I'm just gonna push that icing around to the ends so that I'm making sure I'm covering every part of the cookie. Um, you can also give the cookie a little shake, which will allow the frosting to settle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the top part of my frosting. You always wanna allow a little bit of time for the frosting to dry so that you can layer on top of that. I am going to take my white and I'm gonna slowly do the top part of my ice cream.
Girl Scouts. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this encourages you to bake or to do something creative or different than you're used to. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Thank you so much. That's a wrap. Give me a follow if you want to continue the tutorials. Hopefully um, I'll get better at making them than I am now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much.